Well, good morning to all, and thank you for joining the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church today on our YouTube channel for our worship services. For those returning, thank you for coming back. For those who are here for the first time, I trust that something will be said to inspire you and encourage you to return and invite others to do so as well. We also ask that you subscribe to our channel so that you can receive notifications when we will be on the air. Let us offer a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing and all of the marvelous things that you've prepared for us that we have yet to experience. We pray now that you would be with us. Bless every participant in this worship experience, that everything that we say today will glorify you and edify the body of believers. In Jesus' name, amen. To kick off our services today, we have a special presentation. Allow me to present this segment by sharing the following information. Mental Health Awareness Month, also referred to as Mental Health Month, has been observed in May in the United States since 1949, reaching millions of people in the United States through media, local events, and screenings. Mental Health Awareness Month began in the United States, as I said, in 1949, and each year in mid-March, Mental Health America releases a toolkit of materials to guide preparation to outreach activities during Mental Health Month. We are blessed to have within the family of the Tabernacle Parade Christian Church a mental health specialist, uh, a licensed mental health specialist, uh, who will come uh, uh, and share with us her credentials and also share the information regarding mental health. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning. My name is Terika Hardy. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and mental health therapist. You know, I've been in the mental health field for uh, over 13 years now, and you know, I'm pretty passionate about what I do. Um, I'm passionate about helping others. I'm passionate about um, helping individuals to live that abundant life that God promised us in the Word, right? Um, so, you know, for many of you who may not know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And the purpose of Mental Health Awareness Month is to bring awareness to mental health, to the fact that your mental health is important to your overall health. And so, um, understanding what's going on right now with the pandemic and uh, with the challenging times, you know, I reached out to Pastor and asked Pastor if I could just talk to you uh, for briefly and for a few moments um, to give you some quick mental health tips that can help you get through this time, and not only through this time, but beyond. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate, particularly about self-care in terms of mental health and helping individuals. I'm talking about the helpers. I'm talking about the ministers, the pastors, um, Christians, those that serve, nurses, social workers. If you are in any capacity where you serve others, where you provide a service to others, where you, you um, kind of throw out a lifeline for others, I have a passion for helping you to build self-care and to build resilience. So today, really quick, I, I, I thought of an acronym that would be befitting for right now and during these times um, from the acronym of SAFE, S-A-F-E. I'm going to share with you a few mental health tips. So the first one is S, as in um, it's S for SAFE. So S is for self-care. So we know that God has invested a lot in, in us, in, in, our, in, in our lives. You know, he's given us this body, this, this shell for us to be able to carry out the abundant life, to carry out our purpose, plans, and destinies that he has for us. But in order to do that, we have to take care of ourselves. And when we talk about self-care, I'm talking about from a holistic perspective. I'm talking about emotional self-care, physical self-care, taking care of yourself nutritionally, and also spiritual self-care. So some of the things that you can do right now in terms of taking care of yourself, number one is eating nutritious meals. You know, the, the enemy here is stress, okay? The enemy to living the abundant life is stress. And there are all types of different kinds of stress and different factors that can, that can activate what we call the stress response system, right? And so, uh, nutrition can, uh, poor nutrition can do that. So make sure, make, be intentional about taking care of yourself. Make sure you're eating a nutritious meal. Make sure you're getting some berries and some vegetables, um, you know, on your plate during this time. 
you know, also in taking care of yourself physically, make sure you're moving. You know, put those things in motion right now with the distancing guidelines. Make sure you're moving. Get out, you know, walk. Or if you don't want to get out, turn on a YouTube video and, and move, exercise. Make it a point to walk around the house. Just get yourself moving, okay? And also, in terms of self-care, we got to make sure that we're aware of our emotional self-care. Just being, being, and I'll talk about that in a little, a few moments, but being aware of our thoughts and our feelings. Um, also, and being aware of the relationships that we have with others. Um, and then spiritual self-care. You know, in my research and in dealing with clients and helping them to overcome and build their resilience, one of the things, there's various theories about self-care and resilience out there, but one thing remains is that, you know, researchers, they try to find out how can a group of people experience a crisis or experience a traumatic, you know, event, and some people bounce back and others don't. But one of the things that, that's a common denominator or a common theme is that individuals that believe in something that is powerful, that believe in a God that is powerful than they are, that believe in a God that can strengthen them to overcome, they are able to move forward from particular crisis situations or, um, or pandemics like we are in now. And so S is for self-care. Again, taking care of yourself. A is for awareness. You know, I'm reminded of that scripture um, that talks about bringing our thoughts into captivity, bringing our thoughts out of captivity, I'm sorry, and into and aligning with the promises of God. You know, and, and when I think about that scripture, I think about the importance of being aware of our thoughts, being aware of our feelings, being aware of things that trigger us and, and that may stress us out. And so we have to be aware of those things. And you have the power um, when you become aware of those things, when you become, when you understand that you're stressed, you have the power to do something about it. You can limit and set boundaries on the amount of information that you're taking in right now. You know, I know when you turn on the news and, you know, when you're talking to others, they're constantly talking about, you know, crisis and what's going on. If you feel your stress levels rising up, you can you can quickly turn off the TV. You can quickly the you can quickly turn off your phone or or turn off your social media app, okay? Because again, you have the power to set those boundaries and those parameters around you. So I want you to use that power and use that, you know, to use that power to identify and control what you're consuming right now. Um, and so again, A is awareness. And, and also when I talk about awareness, you know, there's a lot of things that's going on right now that's talking about what we can control, right? I mean, we can not control the amount of toilet paper that's on the shelves. We can not control the guidelines that are out there. We can not control even what other people are thinking, what they're saying. But we have to not focus on what we can control and focus and lean in on what you can control. Like I said, you can control what you consume. You can control and identify your thoughts and decide you know what I'm not here this thought right now is not coming from God but I'm gonna lean on the word that says whatsoever things that are lovely whatsoever things that are a good report whatsoever things that are noble I want to think on those things so those are those particular things that you have control over you know God has given us the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and said that nothing by any means can harm us so again utilize that control lean in don't focus so much on what you can control Lean into what you can control. So that's A for awareness. And F is for fellowship. And I think that that's really important right now because, you know, with the distancing guidelines, you know, and I know that it's called social distancing, but, you know, I always encourage others to look from it from a perspective of not necessarily social distancing, but physical distancing because language is important. And, and when we talk about physical distancing, it doesn't, it helps us to realize that we don't have to isolate ourselves, so to speak. Yeah, we may not be able to meet, you know, in, in large uh, capacities right now, but again, you can utilize the virtual, uh, you can utilize FaceTime, um, Google Hangouts, you can utilize text messaging, even Zoom, whatever, you can utilize various virtual avenues to reach out to your loved ones and check on them, you know, and, and figure out how you can be a blessing to others in terms of fellowship. And when you're thinking about fellowship, do an inventory. 
for those that are, you know, that, that are not supporting what you're trying to do right now in your life, that are just bringing ne negativity in your life, again, you have the power to set parameters and boundaries uh, around those things. You don't have to be anybody's trash can. So someone that you're talking to and they're, you know, constantly spitting out negativity and trash, so to speak, you don't have to be anybody's trash can. You can just set those parameters. And while I'm on fellowship, when we reach out to others, I want to talk about suicide prevention for a moment. Because I don't want us, you know, again, church is important, um, definitely, and prayer is a powerful tool. I use it. But let's not forget the power of counselors. You know, the word talks about counselors, and in the, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And that is in Proverbs 11 and 15, I believe. So again, you know, don't be afraid to reach out. But also, friends and family, you can help with suicide prevention. Number one, if you feel like you have a concern from your friends or your family, concern about their mental health, you know, call them up. And don't be afraid to ask them the, this question. Are you having thoughts about harming yourself? You know, I have a lot of people that shy away from that question because they say, oh, if I ask that, I feel like I'm putting that thought into my family member or my friend's uh, mind. And I'm here to tell you as a mental health professional, a licensed clinical social worker, if, it's, if it was in their mind before, you're not putting, you're not putting it in their mind. Um, you know, if you ask them and they say no, oh, fine. If they say yes, the next step is you want to acknowledge and validate their feelings. First of all, you want to thank them for sharing that particular information with you. Yes, I'm thinking about harming myself. Thank them for sharing that and acknowledge that, hey, this is a challenging time, but I'm going to get you some help. And if you if you reach out to a family, a friend that's having some thoughts about harming themselves or just maybe having a struggling uh, for in terms of mental health, I want to give you this the crisis hotline number, and that's one 800 273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. Now, particularly if you are a veteran, you would need to press the number one after you call that number. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. And if you are a veteran, press one. If you're not a veteran, just remain on the line. And so that's the crisis hotline that's available 24 hours, seven days a week, even on holidays. So that's F for fellowship. Again, we're not, again, we have moved from social distancing to physical distancing. And last but not least is E. That's enjoy. You know, this time right now, you may feel like that you've been placed in timeout due to the physical distancing guidelines. But you know what? I want you to restructure that and say, you know what? I'm, I'm placed in time in. This is time in for me to focus on inwardly what's going on with me, for me to focus on and draw near to God. Because God says when you draw near, he's there. He draws near to you as well. So again, it's time for you to focus in. What are some of those hobbies that you've been wanting to do that now you have extra time to do? What skill have you been wanting to learn, but now you have extra time to learn and research about? You know, this is a time that God is really positioning his people for when this is over. For, it, for us to be ready for him to those promises that God has whispered in your ear that he's confirmed. This is the time for us to re-up. This is the time for us to strengthen our stamina and strengthen um, strengthen our purpose, strengthen our skills so that we'll be ready. Um, we'll be ready to be access to the kingdom when the time comes. So again, that's, that's safe. That's F, S, that's self-care. A is awareness. F is fellowship, and E is, hey, enjoy this time. Again, I'm Terika Hardy. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I thank you so much for listening, and I hope something has been said to encourage you during this time. If you look at this song, he's God, and he don't need nobody else. There's no question about your greatness No searching for your power All the wonder of your glory To you for the years is but one hour Your knowledge is all encompassing To your wisdom there is no end
Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth is here always. You are He who was and is and is to come. Who is He that can never your day? You plumb the sun to burn its face, and the night moon howls like from day.
for you alone. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Our oh, God. You are God. Oh. acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my everything, my all in all. Amen? Amen. And amen. Habakkuk 3, verses 17 and 18 is the text used for this message on today. You know, I wrestled a bit with, this, uh, with the title of this message because I talked a, a few weeks ago about peace in the midst of crisis. Uh, so I thought I would uh, uh, entitle this one, Joy in Troubled Times. But after prayerful deliberation and considering the unprecedented predicament that we're facing, I finally settled on the title, If the Worst Should Come. Right. If the Worst Should Come. The purpose of this message and every sermon and Bible study that the Lord allows me to present is first and foremost to glorify God, is to edify God's people as, as we get prepared for the challenges we currently face and the challenges ahead of us. For the most part, the majority of people are often caught off guard when the worst comes. And I suspect this happened because sometimes we become too at ease and comfortable with all of the modern conveniences of life. So we surmise that the worst will never come for us. However, we should never get too comfortable because the worst has a way of sneaking up on us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's right. That's right. Consider these chronological events. The December 7th, 1941 surprise attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on the Hawaiian Naval Base, killing 2,403 Americans, was one of the worst disasters in history, leading to our involvement in World War II. The next event, easily one of the worst disasters in U.S. history, took place on March 24, 1989, when the Exxon Valdez oil tanker struck a reef in Alaska that's released 10 million gallons of oil. And even to this day, they are still feeling the repercussions of the damage that it caused. September 11, 2001, is indisputably one of the worst disasters our great nation has ever suffered. As 19 terrorists took control of four planes and crashed them into the Pentagon, the World Trade Center, and a field in Pennsylvania leading to a total of 2,977 fatalities, over 6,000 more injured, and severely damaged the national morale. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina wreaked havoc from Florida to Texas and is considered the worst 
and most destructive history in U.S. history. In, in September 2017, Hurricane Maria struck the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico, and it, it says a, a, a total of 2,975 lives were lost. And now here we are in 2020. We're dealing with this COVID-19 uh, pandemic with really no end in sight. And although there was a plan in place left by the Obama administration to curtail, curtail such an event as this, the United States found themselves unprepared for this unparalleled global event. So the worst certainly does come. Yeah. But in our text today, we find an obscure prophet named Habakkuk. He had a plan for the worst. Habakkuk lived during a time of national calamity. He saw the people turning their back on God. And what he saw frightened him. When we read chapters 1 and 2, we see Habakkuk pouring out his complaints before God because from his perspective, he could see that the nation was dying. He could see people could care less about what the law said. He saw morals were obviously missing and obedience to God was seemingly optional. Not only was there corruption in government, there was also moral, ethical, and even spiritual erosion. Does any of this sound familiar? All right. All right. There was a serious breach in the covenant relationship between God and people. Yeah. Unlike some of the other prophets who stood before the people for God, Habakkuk stood before God for the people. He uttered questions not unfamiliar to some of the questions that we might even ponder today. Why does the wicked seemingly go unpunished? How long will God allow wickedness to go unanswered? When is God going to step in and right this uh, perverse situation? But God reassured Habakkuk that the wicked do not go unpunished and that there was already a master plan in place to restore order to the land, to reestablish justice in government, and to reinstate strict adherence and obedience to God's word. As I use my sanctified imagination, allow me to give you an abridged version of how this conversation went between God and Habakkuk. God said, listen Habakkuk, I, I hope you're sitting down because what I'm about to tell you might be a bit mind-boggling. It might take a minute to internalize it and, and until it happens, you probably won't understand it. But listen to this, I'm raising up the Babylonians to restore order in the land. Habakkuk said the Babylonians, God, are, are you sure you, you, got to, you got to be kidding me? The, the Babylonians, look, they're worse than we are. Look, for Habakkuk, God's cure was just as bad as the disease, if not worse, because the Babylonians were more wicked and, and, and unjust and unfair than anybody else around. The Babylonian was, was sort of like the, the bad boy Detroit Pistons uh, during their heyday. No, nobody was as ruthless uh, like the bad boys. And, and nobody wanted to play them. Nobody wanted to be around them. So using a quote from Max Lucado, paraphrased from Genesis 50 and 20, in God's hands, intended evil becomes eventual good. That's right. Uh, that sounds like something I should have said. Right. But look, in God's hands, God. Intended evil becomes eventual good. God chose the old evil bad boy Babylonians in his divine plan for national healing and redemption. So Habakkuk had no other choice but to wait for the devastating day of calamity, trusting that the Almighty God will once again do what he always does. Right, so Habakkuk said, Lord, I know you got to do what you got to do. All right. But listen, in your wrath, Please, Lord, Please. have mercy. Listen, the worst did come to Habakkuk's day, just as it will come to our day. In this life, everything does not always go according to our plans. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We will be faced with calamitous circumstances. We will face tumultuous times. We will face perilous predicaments as they arrest our attention, zigzagging across the landscape of our collective and individual horizons. In times like these, listen to me good. Now, we need to have a strategic plan for ministry, a contingency plan for our personal economic stability, and a dynamic course of action for our nation as we face the unknown because the worst does come. All right, all right, all right. There are bumps in the road. 
There are going to be potholes that you cannot avoid. Listen, there are detours ahead. There are problems to endure. And there are dilemmas to deal with. In other words, the worst does come. When we examine the state of, uh, of affairs in the world today, it seems like the worst has already come. Just look around. We see that we have an impeached president. We have an insensitive Senate, a cowardly Congress, an invisible Supreme Court, a widening gap between the rich and the poor, children with no hope, mothers who can't cope, fathers on dope. Many of our heroes are becoming zeros and this pandemic has us on lockdown, mm -hmm. on the verge of going stir crazy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that are on lockdown going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Listen. So allow me to take this, this slight detour from a message and ask this question. How are you doing wow. with all of this uncertainty? How are you really doing with all this going on? I, I, I don't want you to answer that too quickly. I want you to stop for a moment uh, and don't breathe by that question without really thinking about it. So listen to the question again. Maybe even close your eyes and take a deep breath and, and think about it. how are you really doing? How are you really doing? Are you feeling calm, peaceful, relaxed, and content? Or do your emotions tend to be leaning more towards anxiousness, being fearful, worried, disconnected? One feeling that seems to be extremely common at this moment is loneliness. And this is because human beings were not dis designed for isolation. No, they weren't. No, no, we are social creatures designed for connection and interconnection with one another. So right now, many of us are feeling disconnected from family, mm -hmm. from friends, from neighbors, yeah. from coworkers. Some folk are so desperate for connectivity right now that we wouldn't even mind being around those kinfolk. They don't really like that much. <laughs> friends that, that they would normally not want to be around, they wouldn't mind. If they showed up right about now, say out if you can't say amen. So needless to say, loneliness is quite amplified. Yes. But hold on a minute. Before you start going, start looking for the nearest bread to jump off of, I do have some good news. All right. As bleak and gloomy as it might appear right now, this is a great time to be a member of the household of faith. Yes, it is. This is a great time to be involved in ministry. This can be and should be the church's finest hour. I believe the best days of the church are ahead of us. Our future is grand and glorious. Our brightest days are ahead of us. Listen to me, preachers. Our best sermons are ahead of us. Ministry leaders and partners, our, our greatest opportunities for ministry are ahead of us. Our best mission opportunities are right before us. Listen, here at home. Listen, foreign mission is great. And I applaud those who are involved in that. But listen, we have major work to do right here at home right here. to accomplish. Charity begins at home and then spreads abroad. So right here at home, our greatest ecumenical encounters are before us for the best is truly yet to come. As we make this methodical march deeper into this millennium, we need to put on our game face. We need to get busy. You know, I lived in, in Southern California uh, from 1976 to 2004, so I became an avid Laker fan. Don't y'all hate, don't hate. I, I'm trying to get with the Grizzlies, but I'm still a Laker fan right here. So, so when, I, when I talk about game face, I'm saying we need to develop a Mamba mentality. Oh. A la Kobe Bryant. L listen, I know Kobe is no longer with us, but any basketball fan who has followed basketball over the next the last 20 years know that Kobe seemingly thrived on, on being behind by 10 points with a few minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's when Kobe often came to his best and he would take over the game. In adversity, usually you can count on Kobe to stand up and be counted. Well, listen, Saints. It's census time for us. In other words, it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to be counted. This is not the time for pompous preachers. This is not the time for lackadaisical late persons. This is not the time for cowardly Christians. Listen, listen. This world, this millennial generation needs a strong and clear word from the Lord. And the people of God, that's us, y'all. We are called to give that message. Say amen, somebody. Amen. If you were to search the history books, you would discover that the church has had her greatest moments of productivity, not in the best of times, but in the worst of times. It was in the worst of times that the church produced some of her greatest leaders. 
When I reflect on African American history, some of our most memorable moments have come in the worst of times. When we couldn't go to school, we taught ourselves to read and write. When we couldn't find work, we started our own businesses. When we couldn't bank and get along at Chase and City Corp, we created Citizens Trust and Tri-State Bank. When we couldn't go to Harvard or Yale or, 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 or Princeton, we had more appreciation for our HCBUs like Howard and Bishop and Tuskegee. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Right, right. Adversity is not new to us as a people because history chronicles that no other group of people has had to accomplish so much with so little, which demonstrate that we possess the innate ability to thrive yeah. during adversity. That's right. That's right. In fact, in the worst of times, we have tapped into the authenticity of our creativity and use what 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 and, 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 and use the things that people wanted to throw away, basically yeah. making something out of nothing. Yeah, right. What are you talking about? When they gave us seeds, we gave them cotton. Mm -hmm. When they gave us the blues, we produced songs and music. Mm -hmm. When they gave us pain, we wrote poems. When they gave us trouble, we turned them into testimonies. When, when the worst came in our history, some man or some woman always stood up and, and, and to bring the, the best out of the worst. Yes. What am I talking about? When we needed someone to lead us out of slavery, Harriet Tubman stood all right, up. All right. When we needed scholarship, W.E.B. Du Bois stood up. Yeah, yeah. When we needed a leader with compassion, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. stood up. Mm -hmm. When we needed some revolutionary fire, Malcolm X stood up. So now guess what, saints? This is our day. Our day. This is our hour. This is our season to stand up. It's time for us to lead our march. It's time for us to tell our story. It's time for us to let our little light shine. It's time for us to chart our course. This is our time, Tabernacle Praise Christian Church and churches all over the nation. This is our time to stand up. Amen. Listen, Habakkuk said to his generation that he had a plan for the worst of times. And the good news is, the same plan, same plan will work for us today. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18 reads this way. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vine, though the, the produce of the olive tree fails, and the field yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stall. This sounds like the worst of times, doesn't it? Yet I will rejoice yes, yes. in the Lord. I want you to notice that Habakkuk does not say then I will rejoice in the Lord. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. That means I'm going to keep on knowing what I've been doing all the time. In the best of times, I'm going to give praise to the Lord. In the worst of times that I perceive, I'm going to give the best to the Lord. I'm going to keep on doing and keep on praising God because what really matters has not changed. The word of God is infallible. The word of God is irrefutable. The word of God is immutable. Listen to me, saying, God is no stranger to this calamity that we are facing. This coronavirus doesn't mean no, God can handle this in the blink of an eye. Listen, the same God who moved in our history, the same God is going to work in this present hour. Listen, listen, so I'm going to live by what my faith tells me. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And you know what? My faith tells me that God is going to come through again. Yes, he is. My faith that tells me in God's own time, he's going to make everything all right. My faith tells me that God is going to give me sure footing on slippery slope. My faith tells me that God will empower me to rise above, above stereotypes and, and economic setbacks so I can make a significant accomplishment Amen. in this world. My faith tells me that wickedness for a while may reign. Satan's cause may seem to gain, but there is a God there it is. who rules above. Yes. With a hand of power and a heart of love, and if I'm right, he'll fight my battle, and I shall have peace someday. Amen. Habakkuk is saying to you and to me, it's time to get up. It's time to look up. It's time to stand up. Stand up. It's time to straighten up. It's time to speak up, not in my name. Not in the church's name, not in your name, but in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, there's power in the name. There's deliverance in the name. There's healing in that name. There's breakthrough in that name. So listen to me. If the worst should come, don't you dare fret. And don't you dare fear because God is on our side. 
The word of God reminds us in Romans 8 and 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Another passage, it says in 1 John 4 and 4b, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. So when it seems like the worst has come into your life, just remember, the battle is already over. Yes, sir. Victory has already been won. Satan is already defeated. So, so you can overcome anything that he puts in your path. Listen, but you can only experience his victory by being on the winning team. You can join this team by giving your life to God and entering into a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's so very simple. You don't have to know the pastor. You don't have to be in a certain circle of friends. All you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him, raised Jesus Christ from the dead, and you shall be saved. That means you're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means you're on a winning team. Amen? Amen. 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 And hallelujah. Listen, if you live locally and you're interested in receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, becoming a member of the Tabernacle Praise Christian Church, if you have questions about our church or anything about this ministry, send your contact information and your phone number, any questions to labheal60 at gmail.com. I'd like to thank all of our partners and friends for your continued financial support to this ministry. For others of you who would like to give to support, these are the methods by which you can give. You can support TOP with your giving four different ways. Via Cash App, our ID is dollar sign T-O-P-C-C Four three two five, texting top to seven seven nine seven seven, using the top app to access PushPay by clicking the giving icon, and finally, you can mail us your gifts at four three two five Hacks Cross Road, Memphis Tennessee three eight one two five. Back to you, Pastor Nate. As a final thought, even if the worst should come in your life, let your hope in Christ Jesus be the anchor for your soul. Just because everything around you is going crazy doesn't mean that you have to. Jesus promises a hope for the future, but he also gives you power for the present. Always remember, as chaotic as, as things may seem around you, God still has a plan for your life. And that plan is to give you a future and a hope. Until next time, this is Pastor Nate saying, be blessed. <laughs>